I'd like to turn now to former Israeli ambassador to the United States, Dr. Michael Oren. He is joining us from New York. So, Ambassador, you are in the States right now. Give us a sense of the international media coverage that we're seeing in regards to this new Israeli government. What are people in the U.S. saying about new Prime Minister Bennett? Well, there's a lot of hope, a lot of optimism here. Um, it was clear that uh, the years of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's um, was in office in the United States were characterized by, uh, certainly during periods of democratic uh, administrations, periods of tension, periods of open conflict, even crisis uh, during the Obama years, and now even more recently during the uh, first half year of the Biden presidency. And, and uh, Netanyahu made it clear in his speech the Knesset that he, in contrast to Bennett, would have sought a, a sort of an open opposition uh, to the Biden administration's intention to renew the Iranian nuclear deal. So there's a sense of that, that the tone will change. I personally think, Natasha, that there's over-optimism about an actual change in Israeli policy. I don't think any substantive change is going to take place, uh, neither on the peace process, certainly not on the nuclear deal. Um, but I hope that the Americans won't be too disappointed. What kind of relationship can we expect the Biden administration to have with Ben and also Biden more specifically and this new government coalition? Well, the Israeli uh, government is so diverse uh, politically. I think that they may have a different relationship with uh, with Natalie Bennett that they might have with Yair Lapid. Certainly, they would have with Barav Mikhaeli. Um, but I think if we focus on, on Natalie Bennett himself, he's a person who knows America. He comes from an American family. His English is, is very, very good. Um, and I think that they will have an open discussion. Does that mean they're going to agree on everything? No. Are they going to agree on most things? Probably not either, uh, whether it be uh, on the two-state solution based on the 67 borders with mutually agreed swaps and redividing Jerusalem. Uh, Natalie Ben is not going to agree to that. And he made it clear in his Knesset speech that he wouldn't abide uh, by a, a renewed JCPOA. Mm -hmm. So substantively, there's no change. Again, I think in terms of tone, in terms of person-to-person -person interaction, uh, I think there'll be an improvement. All right, now you've spoken about Iran already twice, and, and I'd like to touch on this because this was also one of the main issues that we heard Netanyahu speak about earlier today in his speech as outgoing prime minister. What kind of approach can we really expect from Bennett when it comes to addressing the American government on this issue? Is he going to be tough? I think he has to be tough. Uh, the Iranian nuclear deal poses a strategic, if not existential, threat to the state of Israel. And the overwhelming majority of Israeli policymakers, even in this diverse government, uh, agree. Um, and so he's, he's Bob Tevin is going to pursue Israel's national defense interests, of course. How, how he does it? Uh, be making speeches to the joint session of Congress, as Netanyahu did in 2015. Uh, I sincerely doubt it. Uh, will there be statements coming out that will be critical of the administration if it does renew the JCPOA? Uh, certainly. Uh, I would hope, Natasha, that behind the scenes, we can enter into an intimate discussion with the Biden administration. Uh, about on the subject of how, if the JCPOA is renewed, how the United States will act in a substantive way to ensure our security. Right. Well, I mean, there's certainly a lot of questions surrounding this. Now, I'd like to turn to Netanyahu um, and, and basically his legacy. I mean, in your opinion, has Netanyahu left Israel better off than when he first came to power as prime minister? And what were his major accomplishments? Where did he fail? Well, I think that Netanyahu was a transformative uh, prime minister. Um, he, uh, he marshaled in Israel's transformation uh, from being a, a largely uh, middle class or even lower middle class uh, agrarian society to a high tech society, a, a superpower economically in terms of innovation, in terms of our even military power. Uh, he diversified our foreign policy. He opened up the doors to China, to Russia, to, to Africa, to South America that didn't exist before. Uh, he was the he presided over the signing of the Abraham Accords, which in itself was revolutionary. Um, he people don't know this about Netanyahu. He, he's actually very war adverse. He kept us out of major conflicts, and the last truly large scale conflict we had was in 2006 in, in the Lebanon War, uh, which wasn't uh, under the terms of under the uh, prime ministership of Edward Olmert. Um, Netanyahu doesn't like war. Um, he kept us out of it. We may miss him on that, by the way, in the future. Um, many, many aspects uh, in legislation, about 32 pieces of legislation that uh, lifted up uh, regulatory restrictions that opened up the Israeli uh, economy. Um, so, and invest in transforming Israel, making the Israel the number one country in the world in terms of the percentage of its GDP that's invested in innovation.
Uh, much of that is Netanyahu. It's Netanyahu, the finance minister, not Netanyahu, the, the prime minister. Um, so, yes, um, I think history uh, will uh, judge leaders differently 50 years, 100 years from now. Um, I remember that looking back at, uh, at Truman in the 1940s, people didn't like Truman in the 1940s. Today, he's viewed as one of America's greatest presidents. I remember Menachem Begin, uh, how many Israelis hated, hated Begin. And today, everyone thinks of uh, Begin with great nostalgia, sort of wistfully. Um, so history will judge Netanyahu differently. A lot of it depends, Natasha, on the way he exits his office. Uh, if he exits uh, as previous uh, prime ministers, Yitzhak Shamir, um, acknowledging the legitimacy of the Israeli political system, of Israeli democracy, or if he follows the, the uh, president of Donald Trump, I think that will uh, determine to a large degree uh, the way his legacy is viewed by future mm -hmm. generations. All right, now one last thing that I didn't mention. We saw Biden very quickly congratulate Naftali Bennett uh, being sworn in as the next Israeli prime minister. What does that tell us? I tell you something about the nature of the administration's relationship with the previous prime minister. It took uh, the Biden administration three weeks to call Netanyahu. It took uh, uh, Biden, what, about the 30 minutes to call Bennett? Um, and uh, and the expressions of support, mutual affection, and, and commitment to uh, the U.S.-Israel alliance uh, were the best we've heard, um, probably in, in several decades. Extraordinary, um, the outpouring of, of mutual respect and affection. Um, and again, this will be tested, I think, uh, particularly by the Iranian nuclear deal negotiations and the intimations now coming out of Europe are that, that, that there's been progress, civic progress has been made toward renewing the JCPOA. Um, so all of that goodwill, all of that affection, all of that commitment to the bilateral relationship will be tested once that JCPOA is renewed.